Assalamu alaikum. The lecture of today will be about the pulp anatomy and its significance from the endodontic point of view. For successful endodontic therapy, it is essential to have the knowledge of normal configuration of pulp cavity. Variation in canal system must also be kept in mind while performing the root canal treatment. As we know, the pulp cavity lies within the tooth and it's enclosed by dentine all around except at the apical foramen. The pulp cavity is divided into two parts, pulp chamber and root canal. The pulp chamber and the root canal are connected to each other through the canal orifice. Canal configuration. In most cases, number of root canal corresponds with number of roots, but a root may have more than one canal. According to the configuration of root canal systems, there are four types of root canal. Type 1 single canal from pulp chamber to apex. Type 2 two separate canals, leaving the chamber by exiting as one canal. Type 3 two separate canals, leaving the chamber and exiting as two separate foramina. Type 4 one canal leaving the chamber but dividing into two separate canals and exiting in two separate foramina. In the next slides, we will talk about the individual tooth anatomy and we will go through the pulp anatomy of each tooth. And we will talk about some clinical considerations from the endodontic point of view. Maxillary central incisor. The average length of the maxillary central incisor is 22.5 mm. The pulp chamber is located in the center of the crown with equal distance from the dentinal walls. Mesiodistally, the pulp chamber follows the outline of the crown and its ovoid in shape. Buccopedatally, the pulp chamber is narrow and it joins the root canal with a constriction just apical to the cervix. Central incisor has one root with one root canal. Coronally, the root canal is wider but copulatally. Most of the time, the root of central incisor is found to be straight. Clinical considerations. A pulp horn can be exposed following a relatively small fracture of an incisal corner in young patients. And as shown in this picture, the size of the pulp is much bigger in young person compared to an old person. Lateral and accessory canals are usually found in the apical third. Most of the canals are straight. However, 15 to 20 percent of roots show labial or palatal care. Labial perforation is most commonly seen during excess cavity preparation, as shown in the attached picture. Maxillary lateral incisor. The average length of maxillary lateral incisor is 21 mm. The shape of the pulp chamber of maxillary lateral incisor is similar to that of maxillary central incisor, but there are few differences. The incisal outline of the pulp chamber is more rounded, and the lateral incisor has two pulp horns. The root canal of maxillary lateral incisor has finer diameter than that of central incisor. Labiopalatally, the canal is wider. And usually shows constriction just apical to the cervix. The canal is ovoid labiopalatally in cervical third, ovoid in middle third, and round in apical third. The apical region of the canal is usually curved in palatal direction. Clinical endodontic considerations Since palatal curvature of apical region is rarely seen radiographically, during cleaning and shaping, ledge formation may occur at this curve. This may result in root canal filling short of apex and maybe other problems. Apical curvature can also complicate surgical procedures like root end cavity preparation and root resection. Lateral canals are more common than maxillary central incisors 
most of the roots have distal curvature and labial perforation is most common error during excess cavity preparation maxillary canine it's the longest tooth it's about 26.5 mm labial palatally the pop chamber is almost triangular in shape with apex pointed incisively mesodistally it's narrow sometimes resembling a flame in cross section it's ovoid in shape with larger diameter labial palatally usually one pulp bone is present corresponding to one cusp the root of maxillary canine normally there is a single root canal which is wider labial palatally than in mesodistal aspect cross section at cervical and middle third shows its oval shape at apex it becomes circular canal is usually straight but may show a distal apical curvature maxillary first premolar this tooth has generally two roots with two canals and average length of 21 mm pulp chamber is wider buccopalatally with two pulp horn corresponding to buccal and palatal cusp palatal canal is usually larger than buccal canal maxillary first premolar has two roots and two canals buccal and palatal the buccal canal is under the buccal cusp and the palatal canal is under the palatal cusp cross section of root canals shows ovoid shape in cervical third with larger dimensions buccopalatally at middle and apical third canals show circular shape in cross section the root canals are usually straight and divergent clinical consideration to locate both canals properly a good quality radiograph should be taken from an angle so as to avoid superimposition of the canals surgical procedures on first premolar should be given more consideration since palatal roots may be difficult to reach the palatal canal is usually larger than the buccal canal maxillary second premolar the length of this tooth is about 21.5 mm the maxillary second premolar usually has one root with a single canal the pulp chamber is wider buccopalatally and narrower mesiodistally and in cross section the pulp chamber has narrow and ovoid shape in more than 60 percent of cases single root with single canal is found and in case of single canal the canal will be wide buccopalatally forming a ribbon like shape and in cross section the canal will be ovoid and narrow at the cervical and middle third and it will become circular at the apical third maxillary first molar the average length of this tooth is about 21 mm maxillary first molar has the largest pulp chamber with four pulp horns mesobuccal mesopalatal distobuccal and distopalatal the bulk of the pulp chamber lies medial to the oblique ridge and the four pulp horns are arranged in a rhomboidal shape which is the shape of the excess cavity as shown in the attached photo the orifices of the root canal are located in three angles of the floor of the pulp chamber the palatal the mesiobuccal and the distobuccal the palatal orifice is the largest and the easiest to locate compared to the other canal the distobuccal canal orifice is located more palatally than the mesiobuccal canal orifice more than 80 percent of maxillary first molars have shown the presence of two canals in the mesiobuccal root the second mesiobuccal canal is located 2 to 3 mm palatal to the first mesiobuccal canal on an imaginary line connecting the first mesiobuccal canal and the palatal canal mesiobuccal canal is the narrowest canal among the other three canals the palatal root canal has the largest diameter the palatal canal can curve buccally in the apical third the lateral canals 
are found in 40% of molars at the apical third and at the trifurcation area. It's also called the forcation canal, as shown in the picture on the lower right side of this slide. Maxillary second molar. The average length of this tooth is about 20 mm. The pulp chamber is similar to the maxillary first molar, except that it's narrower mesiodistally. Mesiobuccal and distal buccal canal orifices lie very close to each other and sometimes in a straight line. Mandibular incisors. The average length of mandibular incisors is about 21 mm. Mandibular incisors are the smallest teeth in the arch and the cross section of the pulp chamber is ovoid in shape. The incidence of two canals can be as high as 41% and the canal is flat and narrow mesodistally and wide buccopalatally. Clinical considerations. It's common to miss the presence of the second canal on the preoperative radiograph if the canals are superimposed. The second canal is usually found lingual to the main canal and since the apex of the mandibular central incisor is inclined lingually, the surgical access may become difficult to achieve. Mandibular canine. The average length of mandibular canine is 22.5 mm. Labiolingually, the pulp chamber is tapered. Also, the pelp chamber appears narrower mesodistally, and there is a cervical constriction at the junction between the pulp chamber and the root canal. Mandibular canine usually has one root and one canal, but can occasionally have two. Coronally, the root canal is oval in cross section, becomes round in the apical region. Lateral canals are present in 30% of cases. Mandibular first premolar. The average length of mandibular first premolar is about 21.5 mm. Mesodistally, the pulp chamber is narrow, and also the pulp chamber has two pulp horns. Buccolingually, the pulp chamber is wide and ovoid. Mandibular first premolar has one root and one canal, but the second canal is still possible. Mesiodistally, the canal is narrower than buccolingual. Lateral canals are present in 44% of the cases. Clinical considerations. The excess cavity of mandibular first premolar extends onto the cusp tip in order to gain straight line access. Surgical access to the apex is often complicated by the proximity of the mental nerve because of closer proximity of root apex to mental canal and foramen mental canal and foramen may mimic the radiographic appearance of the apical pathology mandibular second premolar the average length of this tooth is about 22.5 mm the pulp chamber is similar to that of mandibular first premolar in the cross section, the pulp chamber will show oval shape. Mandibular second premolar usually has one root and one canal, but in 11% of the cases, a second canal can be seen. Root canal cross section tend to be oval coronally and round apically. Mandibular first molar. The average length of this tooth is 21 mm. At the level of the pulp floor, the chamber is quadrilateral wider mesially than distally. The roof of the pulp chamber is rectangular in shape. The pulp chamber may have four or five pulp horns. Mandibular first molar has two roots with three canals. However, four or five canals are also reported. Mesial root has two canals, mesiobuccal and mesiolingual. And in order to visualize them on the radiograph, we will need to take the radiograph with an angle, mesial shift or distal shift. Distal root generally has one canal in 70% of cases. Mandibular second molar. The average length of mandibular second molar 
is 20 mm. The pulp chamber of this tooth is similar to that of mandibular first molar, except it is smaller. Root canal orifices are smaller and lie closer. Mandibular second molar has two roots with three canals, but variations may also happen. C-shaped canals may also be seen in mandibular second molar. It means when the mesial and distal canals become fused together into a fine C-shaped canal, as shown in the attached pictures. Thank you very much for watching this presentation, and please feel free to leave your questions in the comment section and I will get back to them as soon as I can.